Hey everyone, this is a quick tutorial on how to design a character or bust of a character using ZBrush and Photoshop. Uh, this whole process took me about two hours and could probably be even quicker if you don't start with the sphere like I did here. Um, you could start with like a ready built bust and go from there. That would speed up the process quite a bit. But when I started, I really didn't know what I was going to model at all, which is not always a good idea to do. You should probably like start with a sketch or some kind of idea before you start this. Um, so here I'm just blocking in the masses of the face and then the neck and then the shoulders using the move tool. Uh, pretty much use the move tool and the standard brush for this whole project. I mean, one cool thing about ZBrush is you could block out your geometry and actually get a decent amount of the model done and then start moving everything around to see how it looks. You want to change your character up a little bit or create different variations of them. Um, start in with like throwing the sockets down just so I could get some kind of like lively look from them. So it's not just like a big hunk of clay that's staring back at you gives a little more personality and most of the anatomy I'm just basing off of like human anatomy I think at first I was thinking it's gonna be like an alien or something else I don't know uh, here I subdivided it a little bit just to get um, so I can get more detail into it so it's not so pixelated I think I can do it one more time here yeah <clears throat> I showed like hundreds of different ways of doing this, but this is the way I do it, or learn to do it, I guess. I'm just really used to thinking of this as a as a painting, not too different than a painting, except you could just rotate it and kind of paint, but it actually sculpts. So, nothing too exciting here, just laying in some basic shapes of ears. One cool thing about ZBrush or sculpting in 3D, it kind of helps your 2D skills. You got to learn to make sure things look cool from not only in the front, but like three quarters from the back, from the front, you know. Here I'm just playing with the shape of the head. Um, you could save all these out if you like one of them and come back to it later and do another variation of them. It's kind of funny, they all have their own little personalities as weird as they look. I think that's like one of the reasons why I put the features in there at the beginning to kind of like help give this guy a little more character.
I think I subdivided it one more time here and started going into a, a little more detail. I think this part is probably one of the most fun parts right here. As I'm doing this, I'm not too concerned about um, how he would animate or how to rig this guy. Um, all I'm doing it, all I'm doing is trying to get him set up for Photoshop. And then again, you could always paint this if you wanted to from scratch. Um, this way is just more interesting sometimes. Just having different ways of working brings something different to the table. Plus, if you need to do like a turnaround, like a profile on the back of this guy um, kind of helps out quite a bit save some time too plus you could always hand this model off to the client and they could do something with it if they want to So at this point, I decided to add a little more texture to them. So I'll kind of give them a little more skin, basically, skin texture. There's a couple of different ways of doing it. You could like paint it on like I was doing, or use the rectangle tool to drag it into place. Basically, I'm going through all the different like alpha maps that come standard, I guess, with ZBrush and trying to throw them somewhere. Sometimes if I don't use them in Photoshop, they still leave a little bit of history and it's kind of interesting sometimes. Plus helps to break up the surface a little more. So at this point, instead of giving them some eyes, so they're not just like two hollow sockets staring back at you. And just created a different Z sphere, I think. And trying to place it to the right spot here. I just had to like, duplicate it and move it over. Then I realized you could just mirror it over. And deformation just mirror it basically and it creates the same effect on the other side. One thing, if you keep symmetry on all the time, it starts looking too static basically. 
Uh, it's always a good idea to break that symmetry eventually, I guess. Here I had symmetry on, and I wanted to add some teeth that were kind of came with ZBrush. And then for trying to open up the mouth a little more so they could actually fit in there. It's probably a better way of doing it, it's just max masking it off, but you know what I was thinking. Then all of a sudden I got sidetracked for some reason. And I remember that there's a couple of different textures that come with ZBrush. These are the ones that came preloaded in ZBrush, I think. <coughs> Obviously, you just click on them and they turn on and just kind of brush them on. It does affect the model a little bit, so you got to keep that in mind. But it definitely helps to break up the surface a little more. And here I forgot to turn symmetry back on and ended up just going with it. But as you can see, like just turning that off kind of creates a little more interest in the character. I think bringing those ears out helped them quite a bit. I think at this point he starts looking like the guy from Lord of the Rings, the Hobbit or whatever it is. I really didn't realize this until someone pointed that out. It's like a skinnier version of them. Oh yeah, say... I think the new version of ZBrush has like an autosave, but I haven't had a crash on me yet, but, and I really don't want it to, so try to save. But this is about 45 minutes into it since I saved. Um, at this point, I created another layer with a sphere on it, just so I could attach some teeth to the sphere so I could move it around or move them around. <coughs> and then um, <coughs> and then created a, a dynamic shadow. The scale tool is a little odd for me. I'm still trying to get a hold of it. So it's taking me a little longer than needed to get these teeth into position in the right scale, I guess. I think here I divided them a little too early. 
and realize that I shouldn't have done that. <clears throat> so I went back and actually started sculpting on the, the basic geometry. Control Z helps a lot. Teeth are all messed up, like he's been chewing on bones or something. I'm not too concerned on how they look. I could always, um, <clears throat> I'm not too concerned on how they look. I could always go back and uh, paint them out or paint different teeth in there if I needed to. At this point, I'm pretty much set in ZBrush. I think this is the point where I'd probably take them into Photoshop and start doing the rest of it there. <clears throat> 